Hello internet and welcome to the channel. My name is Frankie and today we are continuing this build in Jurassic World Evolution 2. If you'd like to see what we've done so far, make sure to watch the previous videos in which I build that lovely herbivore habitat you can see right there. Uh, in today's episode we're going to be creating a carnivore habitat just behind this visitor centre here and at the moment, at this point in time, I'm not entirely sure what's going in there. What I do know, however, is that it's going to be from the Cretaceous period, as that is what all the herbivores are uh, in the other enclosure. I kind of want to keep that theme at least on this half of the park. The other half is probably going to be Jurassic. It is kind of unfortunate we don't have enough Triassic creatures to do a whole side of the park. But anyway, right here I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to be doing with the enclosure, sketching out some paths... Uh, going round the edge of it. However, I didn't realise how close to the edge of the map I actually was, so my idea kind of has to be rethought. So I bring the path back a little bit to allow more room for the enclosure. Once I start building or putting in the fences, I kind of settle on this kidney bean sort of shape. I want to allow an area around the path to build so that I can add some decorations and such because I've really enjoyed doing these sort of focal points before an enclosure where you've got loads of decorations, a little bit of seating and all that just to make the area where the viewing galleries are look a little bit nicer. So that's why we sort of arch up and round the path just to allow for some space to build that kind of thing. Once I'm happy with the shape, I go ahead and add the viewing galleries. This enclosure isn't quite as big as the previous one, so I'm going to be using the ground level viewing galleries. We don't need to be using the really tall ones that, in my opinion, kind of look like lighthouses. We're going to keep to these ground level ones, as it's quite a shallow enclosure. At this point, I think it's starting to become a bit of a theme with this park that I create a open area that I can fill with statues and rocks and benches and stuff because I've done that both in the entrance and in front of the herbivore enclosure. I just think it, it adds something of interest. I'm not too worried about getting a perfectly symmetrical curve here because I don't think I can due to how I've placed uh, certain parts of the enclosure and the viewing gallery. So that, that's on me, but I don't overly mind. After all, what really matters is what's going to be going inside it, and that is a base layer of loads of sand, just to separate it from the grassy areas around it, and then a bunch of rocks and skeletons. This time I'm going for the Spinosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex, because this is going to be a carnivore enclosure. With the herbivore enclosure, I put the two sauropod skeletons in front of it. Not entirely sure what species it is, I might actually have a look later. Uh, it would make sense if it's a Brachiosaurus, but it's nowhere near as tall as a Brachiosaurus is, so I really don't know. I also add a few benches and a fountain in the middle. I also use the planter style, and when I say that I mean the long trough-like thing with uh, water fountains in it. I haven't used those yet and I thought it'd be kind of cool to make this part of the park be themed around splashy water or something. I don't really know. Another thing that I do is use the foliage brush, which is the kind of spring looking bushes. There are a lot of yellow flowers and nice lush colours in amongst the uh, things that you put down with this brush. I make sure to fill in all the kind of gaps around the paths using that, just to add a bit of life. I also give a little dusting over the top of the sand, because the sand can look at a little bit plain just by itself which is fine if that's what you're going for but I wanted to add just a little bit of life as well so I I also make sure to add a few torches lamps I can never figure out what to call them they actually have a name in game I should probably just pay attention to that but I add some lights of some kind around the area as well because like I said before I really want this park to be really visible at night it's nothing worse than if you have access to a place like this at night, just tripping over stuff because you can't see, that'd be awful. Moving into the enclosure, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do at this point because I haven't actually used this dinosaur before. So in order to understand what it really needs, I'd need to place it in the environment. But something that all dinosaurs need is water. And I thought I'd experiment a little bit this time around and I decided to pull or push, I'm not entirely sure, just lower the ground. I wanted to have a bit of a dip in the surface to have our water be down there. 
I used the flatten tool in order to make it all roughly the same level before I added the water because if I tried to add the water when it was really sloped still it wouldn't really work and as usual I then used the remove water tool to help carve the water a little bit I'm not going to go crazy just going to keep it relatively simple I will then smooth out the edges of the dip that we have created I think having this slope down towards the water really makes it seem like a bit of a watering hole kind of thing that you see in the savannah uh, pretty cool I think once I was happy with the shape it was time to start adding a little bit of colour and to do that I wanted to make under the water the very bottom of this pondy area be a soil because grass isn't going to be growing down there and then I thought I would add a little bit of sand here and there around the edge and as I started to apply the sand to the edge of this little puddle or pond, whatever we're going to call it, watering hole, I thought I might actually make this a bit more part of the theme for this enclosure. So instead of being really light-handed like I was with the previous enclosure, I decided to up it a little bit, spread it about a bit more, have it be more of a feature for this enclosure especially as I knew what dinosaur was going in here and it comes from quite an arid environment, quite a hot place. Speaking of the inhabitants of this enclosure, I think it's finally time to release them and get them over here. So may I introduce the Oshalovenator. Now these guys are awesome. I'm not entirely sure that I've used them before. I would have just played about with them a little bit when I first got this DLC, but they are gorgeous. I haven't really paid much attention to them. They are so quick. I really like their snappy movements. And they just look really creepy. I think partly because of the really narrow snout. And the fact that they stand so upright at times is really weird. I like how long their arms are as well, it just gives you the impression they're going to grab things. So let's get them over to their enclosure and see what else we need to do to it. One obvious thing we're going to need to do regardless of the species is because it is a carnivore, we're going to need to feed it. So I'm going to place some goats and I kind of like these feeders to be out of view. I, they kind of look a bit ugly in my opinion. So I'm going to surround it with trees and have this be the forested area. All of the dinosaurs in this game need a bit of forest, so it doesn't hurt to add some around the feeder. I'm going to try and stick to the edges, clear a little bit of a path for that gate there, which has a bit of a back alley across the whole park to get to the staff area. Being a carnivore means they don't need specific plants in their habitat. Like if you were to make one for any of the herbivores, you need to pick and choose what types of plants you're putting in in order to provide food for them but in this case you could just use forest and it's completely fine you could use the other things for a bit of visual interest which i'm kind of thinking i should have i didn't really think of that whilst i was doing this however i did decide that i wanted to add some of the bushes and scrub a little bit i went for the more arid one for this enclosure as it is more of an well, it's a dinosaur that comes from Australia. It's a lot hotter there than where the rest of this kind of climate is. I didn't focus too much on the climate for the other enclosure, mainly because they came from all around the world, those dinosaurs. But this one has a clear point that it comes from, so I can try and theme it a little bit. As normal, I add quite a few rocks to the edge of the watering hole. It just makes it look a lot more dynamic, I think. I'm not entirely sure why I think it looks better with the water. Maybe it's because you've got the smooth finish of the water and then the really rough texture of the rocks. It's a bit of a juxtaposition. I'm not entirely sure. That could be the reason. So, oh, as we can see, one of our dinosaurs has just arrived. That's pretty good, but we will continue adding our sand and long grass and stuff just until they're all here. I also make the decision to raise certain parts of this enclosure and dip some as well. I wanted the back area to be a bit more raised because that allows, well, visitors to be able to see that portion of the enclosure a bit better if it's risen. It's kind of like people that make fish tanks and stuff. 
they will have their substrate be slightly higher at the back in order to make the back more visible and it kind of helps to make the tank look a bit bigger. I guess it kind of does that here too. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't know. I like the variation in heights. And whilst I've been playing about with that, I thought I'd add some dips as well. Why don't we make this enclosure really different? Have lots of dips and lifts, but not in the dancing sense. We are strictly talking about the surface here. We're not doing any dancing with these dinosaurs. I somehow feel like that wouldn't go quite as well as we'd hope. Now that the enclosure is at a place I'm pretty happy with, let's just take a look at these dinosaurs and see how they're doing in their habitat. I really like the colorization on this one. Is that a word or coloration? I like the color of this dinosaur. <laughs> I think it looks really good. I, I don't like how when it walks up a hill, it becomes really upright. It looks proper creepy. It starts to go a bit too towards human, which I don't like. Really strange. I also noticed whilst playing this that if you try to at least in capture mode oh what's he doing straight for the goat okay oh he woke up and chose violence hmm. well uh, when you're in capture mode if you have made dents in the floor if the level of the ground is lower than when you started your camera won't actually go into that little dip it only goes as low as the surface started it's quite annoying because if I wanted to take a photo of one of the dinosaurs on top of a hill or something, I can't do it from really low down. It's kind of frustrating. Oh, this one's going to go for a drink. I really like these subtle variations in animations between species for things like this. The little head shake as it was drinking and stuff like that. Look, it looks really upright again. Oh, strange. I'm just going to feast on this goat as well. Right, as much as I'd like to watch these guys all day, I think we need to start doing some other stuff. As I started to look around the park, I realised there weren't many people coming to see this exhibit, which is very strange. I would have thought the sharp teeth and the ability to kill would draw people's attention. But they were all still just on the high street or on the path that led to the herbivore enclosure. I didn't quite understand what was going on, so I had to come up with some kind of idea. I thought I'd look at what the local dinosaur appeal was. And it's 426, which I, I didn't actually have anything else to go on. So I wasn't sure if that was good or bad. But going over to the herbivore enclosure, we can see that it's 1,152. Which does make sense. There's a lot of dinosaurs in there. But we need to raise that appeal. And one surefire way of doing that is to create a bit of a hunting situation. I would like to stress no actual dinosaurs were harmed in the making of this video. But these dinosaurs were about to get a feast, and hopefully that should raise their appeal. I know that when dinosaurs fight, they get a certain infamy rating, and that should draw in more guests. Oh, he seems to have noticed something. Uh, okay, it's just water. Never mind. Uh, yeah, so hopefully by killing some lesser dinosaurs, their infamy rating will go up, and therefore more people will be attracted to this part of the park. At least that is my thinking. And as expected, it didn't take too long for them to start getting a little bit violent. Our pack leader, number two of the Oshulavenator, or I can't remember how you pronounce it. Uh, yeah, he's seen his prey and he's going straight for it. It's a shame it's on a hill so the animation's a bit screwed up, but I love the fact that he smacks his hand straight into the skull of the Gallimimus. The noise it makes is... Yeah, it, it really pushes that impact. It's tucking straight in. So hopefully this will boost their rating. There are a few Gallimimus coming, so they have 
plenty opportunity to snack and hopefully become more appealing to the public and we'll see if this actually works. Whilst I'm waiting for our lovely carnivores to finish their dinner, I thought it might be a good idea to link this path that leads to the herbivores directly to the other path. I'm not sure if the fact that people need to go through the visitor centre is slowing down the number of people that get here. It might make a difference, it might not, but it's worth a try. I know this is silly, but I asked for Gallimimus to be airlifted out because it was dead, and I found it really funny that this guy fell asleep on the smoke. Kinda looks like he's doing a gassy fart. I also thought I'd check out if there was a need for a bathroom around here, and apparently there is a need for a bathroom, so I thought I'd put one in this lovely little spot here. Just going to decorate it with some plant boxes and stuff. Nothing too fancy, but hopefully having an extra amenity up here will attract guests. I'm not entirely sure, but you know, every little helps. So I'm happy to report that the numbers did slightly increase in terms of footfall around this area, um, but to boost it just a little bit more. I decided to add this guy. Oh, I accidentally recorded the trophy I earned from him. Yeah, I, I boosted all of his stats and stuff. So let's see how he does. Uh, we will see in the next video what happens with him. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.